<laughs> Welcome to Dallas Vintage Toys Talks. Uh, it's January 25th, the year of our Lord, 2017. Uh, my name is Andy. I'm joined as always by the Tales to My Sonic, Henry Velasquez, and <laughs> the owner of Dallas Vintage Toys, Sean Ninus. Gentlemen. So you can't be killed, right, Tales? <laughs> no. Nah, he just keeps respawning? Uh, no, nah, he just can't keep up. And then he'll disappear, but then he comes back, so it's all good. You know, he's always there in spirit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, how are you guys? How how is the real thing today? Doing good. Yep. Jared, how are you? Uh, I'm all right. All right. Jared's our man behind the camera. All right, all right. He runs everything here. I for brought us. a ton of toys for trade today. Oh, what kind of stuff? Like half my collection. Yeah. Wow. Bought a lot of stuff. Yeah. Very cool. Well, we buy some I'm happy. Trade. I'm happy that Dallas Vintage Toys will give me seventy percent of the value or eighty percent in trade. That's true. That is correct. These are facts. That he's, oh, he's, I think you're he's trying to pick something up. Is what you're saying? Alternative facts. <laughs> Alternative facts. Uh, but um, the great thing about working at Dallas Vintage Toys is there's always an influx of really cool uh, miniatures of, of superheroes and Star Wars characters and just random little things and robots and uh, other robots books and. and, and <laughs> R two D twos that'll give you diabetes and uh, can you all zoom in on this haircut, Jerry? You're blocking yeah. it. You're blocking it with the tag. No, no, it's the the, the, the tag. tag is the haircut. Oh, the tag. The original oh. tag. I thought you talking about the dress lord behind it. Yeah, rock yeah. that haircut. And that little girl is pumped to have whatever beverage is in the thermos. Okay. Is that sealed? Has it been opened? No chance for better back then. I don't think it's ever been used, but the thermos is not in here, but it's in pristine condition. Yeah. You had to take a milkshake to school with you? The thermos? tag's the best part. I, I sure know. would. <laughs> the tag's the best part. Oh, there's a little boy on there. Okay, so hey. it's equal. Hey. That's right. Everyone's talking about the clay face. Like, every, everybody's already seen Yes, it. this toy's amazing! Why is everyone into this thing? Look yeah. at that clay face. I've seen clay. I love that toy line. Uh, Why well, you tell us about what we got in with all the Batman stuff? Uh, we got in a pretty substantial collection, probably like 20, 25 Batman action figures, but within that was pretty much the entire rogues gallery of Batman animated series action figures, including Clayface. Um, he's really, really cool. The, the sculpt on him for, for 94, I believe is when this came out, uh, is impeccable. Uh, it, it, to me, in my opinion, it blows the new DC Collectibles animated series Clayface out of the water. Now, granted, there's no articulation really. He, he can move his arms. Words. That's about it. But he's just, he's gorgeous. And we also have the Phantasm uh, from the Mask of the Phantasm animated film. Uh, that toy one is of the a spoiler. Only, one of the only uh, DC animated films to ever get a theatrical release. Mm -hmm. I believe The Killing Joke was is the only other one. I think um, that was just for like a day or two. But yeah, but spoilers. <gasps> it's his girlfriend the whole time. That's oh how they, my God. but that's how they package yeah, it. It was packaged. It's like, like that. This. So if you saw the toy before you saw the movie, you're like, what the heck? Yeah, I remember being a kid and seeing this in the aisle, and little my little kid brain was just like, well, that's weird. Why'd they give that girl? Also, apparently, I had a southern accent when I was a child. But uh, <laughs> <Yeah. I'm glad laughs> you he also got some Batmobiles and was it? Yeah, Wayne we got Manor Batmobiles. Or? We got Wayne Manor. We got. Uh, we got the Batman Forever Batmobile, the Batman Forever Batwing, um, and lots of, of the old um, Batman Returns action figures as well. I uh, also had a couple more and of Andy's them. Andy's little kid brain. <laughs> it did, honestly. Like, it's, it's the funny thing, because, like, you know, Sean and I, I, I think, what, we have, like, maybe five years? But well, I remember buying some of these at, yeah. like, Target or something. But up. it's it's the, it's the yeah, slightest... The Catwoman was, like, the rare figure in uh -huh. Action Figure Toy Review or uh, Tom Arch Price Guide. Like, it's the slightest age difference, but it's very beneficial for me because my toys that I grew up with aren't really worth anything. <laughs> so I get to have a nostalgia <laughs> kick for, like, five bucks. Uh, so, yeah, we also got Riddler and Two-Face sitting here. But uh, I'm not going to hog the spotlight. Uh, Sean, you got some pretty cool stuff sitting there. Well, as well, you're not man. done talking, though. Bro. Well, I got, we'll come back around. Okay. Uh, will we? I'm on the spotlight. <laughs> oh, well, we bought a. <laughs> Is it Will Me? <laughs> we bought a few proof cards. We sent the other ones off to get AFA graded. It's not even a toy. It's no, a proof card. It's like a you revenge. get to pretend. This is this Revenge of the Jedi. This is the ultimate so this toy. Is a prototype. That's, that's okay. A... Okay, that's cool for. So that's like uh, if you're into packaging. That's and, Bosk when he's cloaked. And this is a first shot <laughs> prototype, so this is hand painted, uh, mm -hmm. no dates, so this is a production uh, prototype. Wow. And if you have any of these out there, I am buying these for my personal collection. Preferably graded. And then here's the, it's a AFA 85 uh, 20 back. 
Mars nice. man. And then we got in a hammerhead that's a straight 85 with 90 subgrades. And of course we got the uh, lunchbox. Mm. <laughs> if someone says the tag on that lunchbox is worth about $50 itself. They might have made that number up. I'm, yeah. mm -hmm. well, we'll sell it to you for 45 yeah. <laughs> That doesn't sound like one of those like, <laughs> no statistics. I'll like you. I'll you okay. one too. And we got this in. I already have this in my personal collection, so this is a... Y'all can have uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can have this one. I already got one. Yeah, one. Wow, that's gorgeous. So, that's the uh, first appearance of Archangel. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Angel, of course, had already been around for a while, but this is the uh, first appearance of him post-apocalypse, manipulating him and everything. What year is that? That is 1988. January wow, I was going to guess that. 29 years old. It's it's really kind of cool because I have like it's the gorgeous. entire run of the X Factor from around that era. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize this when I was a kid or honestly as an adult. But a lot of the animated series, the X Men animated series uh, from like 95, um, yeah, it's take stories from the X Factor, not from the X Men of that mm -hmm. era. That was really cool. Because like, this is like almost verbatim, you know. Uh, besides some of the characters, like, you know, Iceman isn't in the, uh, and Archangel isn't mm -hmm. really in the X-Men animated series that much. No. No, it's like Iceman gets an entire episode. Yeah, and it's actually really good. Like, as far as that cartoon, it's probably one of the best animated episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite episode of the uh, X-Men animated series? Mine's the Juggernauts, and like, uh, it's like episode eight. Because he's got so many puns. He throws a tank at a guy and says, Thank you. Those uh, are good, but I really, I liked, for some reason, I, the Captain America one stands out to me. Oh, that's like one of the last, like, five mm -hmm. episodes. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. like Wolverine didn't have claws because they hadn't written into, like, X Men canon that he had bone claws. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's like World War II and he doesn't have an adamantium or bone claws in the cartoon. And, like, Captain America gives him these claws for climbing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So I want to talk about this huh? milkshake. Yeah, yeah. How is a Brahms milkshake? I've never had one. It's pretty for good. Breakfast. Kinda... You said it was a. Bro, you've never had a Brahms milkshake? I've been breakfast. to Brahms once since I've lived here. It's like half a block away. I know. <laughs> it's not even a Texas company. It's an Oklahoma company. Oh really? Yeah, but the, the secret to Brahms is they have their own cows. Ooh. So they don't like yeah, sort. Through the drive, they're like, mmm. yeah, they, don't, <laughs> they don't source the milk. I'm just gonna go in so, and tell me about y'all's cats. Two so, cheeseburgers. Um, <laughs> oh, they, no, they, have, they have big farms in Oklahoma, and they 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 produce all their own milk, and it's way, it's the it's the Ferrari of milks. Oh. So go in there and get yourself if you drink milk at all. Yeah. Go in there and just get your two gallon. They have them. So every Brahms have like a little store off to the side inside. Like a, like, a, like a mini mart, and you just get man, you get a get yourself a two gallon of Brahms like whole milk. Don't even get that two percent. Don't waste time with the bulk. Get the real deal, mm -hmm. and man, so when you the milk the itself is like a milkshake. See those cows? Mm. It's the best. It's got the Ferrari logo on the side of it. <laughs> and Ferrari cows. Henry <laughs> really wants to talk that about was, this Optimus. That was Brand. so irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> like milk. Goodness, like that I was, was vintage hey, milk. I was just joking. I don't <laughs> really don't want to talk about anything. <laughs> Henry, that has to do with Bronx. You set it up with your beverage, just like your m and I don't regret it. Like, my, you said, I gotta minutes. have my fancy drink in the morning. Anyway, I want to talk about this toy. I don't want to talk about this. This one right here. <laughs> oh. The Kotobuki Artifacts of Boba Fett from Cloud City. From it goes with the Cloud City version of Darth Vader. Uh, Darth Vader, I believe, comes with a base. And then you can put Boba Fett in there, and it's when they're talking. That's and uh, so. the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Kodobuki do doesn't get much love around these parts, so I gotta think, show uh, it. Boba Fett and Darth Vader were talking about before? Um, like, and all crushes. The crushes? Yeah, just, you know, just like, you think Fett was just like, man, what you think about that Princess Leia, huh? She's single? <laughs> and Vader's and like, like talk to her. He's like, I blew up her whole planet, so if you had a boyfriend, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we just want to take turns here, or? No, you can keep going. Finish sure? Sure? Okay, well. I got a robot? I like this version because I like the Carl ones a little bit better. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just a, a toy snob. That comes so, with the old dude in there. I'm I'm looking to get into the uh, masterpiece <laughs> line, and I think I'm gonna stick with Takara only. You're gonna stick with it. What is uh, what's superior to you about a Takara? Nothing. Just packaging looks nicer. Oh, okay. That and there's more options. So I mean, if you if you put your stuff back in the box like I do, um, they've actually produced more than Hasbro has. So if you end up buying any kind of masterpieces, you're gonna end up getting Takara anyway, because there's a whole like 
What is it like? Hasbro's like at twelve. Yeah, they're not even close. Takara yeah, Takara like is like thirty eight. Like Takara is at least three or four times ahead. Yeah. Not to mention that whatever Hasbro will eventually come out with is based off a of Takara mold. Yeah, it's going to be a Takara toy. So anyway. if you're into the okay. Takara stuff, anyways, you, you get first shot also. You're just making it easier on yourself to get Takara. But uh, I believe that the Takara masterpieces hold their value better because you can take them out. They designed the packaging in there in a way that you can remove it, display it, and then put it back exactly how it comes, which of course makes it a lot easier to resell. Where if you get that, if you get the the MP11 um, Optimus Prime, for example, he came oh, with yeah, his crazy Toys R Us exclusive uh, packaging, mm -hmm. is which is gorgeous because you can see yeah, them in the yeah, bubble. Right. We have that's one back there on the shelf. Like um, but it's still a great toy. Yeah, that's recently it's had no fantastic. <laughs> recently that they're trying to fix the toy. packaging. Yeah, but it, even the Bumblebee doesn't come with a cover to the plastic. Yeah. It's just mm -hmm. in, a, in the plastic, but it doesn't have a cover for no for any reason. So if you're a collector, you know you guys watching, you know keeping the packaging is uh, it's smart. It's smart because you, you you maintain some value. It makes it easier to get rid of later if you decide to do that. But also, as we find out over his, the history of time. Uh, the packaging of toys is actually a part of the fun. That's a, the art. Oh, that's yeah. on the art. That's on it. The direction that's on it. The wording. The kid with the crazy chili bowl haircut. <laughs> you know, people in the future hey. will look at whatever <laughs> these toy packaging is, and and they'll say, "Wow, that was what life was like in 2017 or whatever." So if you throw away the packaging, you're throwing away, I think, a, a part of the experience. So well, I know I, I don't want to be a packaging geek on you guys, but I think yeah. I think no, all of us here in this store, at least, we, we love packaging. Well, on that uh, note, like the toys uh, too. I want to ask you two and you guys at home. What? Um, oh, who is that? Who's who is that? Delay. He's watching on delay. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, what is, is, is there a particular packaging that you can think of that is maybe your favorite that you've ever? Uh, yeah, a lot of great E-Man artwork. Yeah, it looks like you know a painting mm -hmm. on some of those. Boxes. That is that is great. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish that they kind of bring that back. Um, packaging, as far as like the actual way it's put in there, figure arts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of have to agree with Sean. It's a lot of those toys from the '80s was like hand painted or drawn or whatever. You know, even like this guy right here, Walrus Man. Like that's beautiful artwork on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. and it's like gorgeous. some of the Tri Logo ones, yeah. they're like paintings instead of just the photography of the no, toy. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. And they have like variants so if you look at the Jedi versus like some of the other toy lines you'll see the painting instead of the mm -hmm. actual product. So. Mm -hmm. Any come to mind with you? Yeah I've got uh, one in particular uh, It's uh, it was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive um, it's a uh, Swamp Thing figure mm. that DC Collectibles put out a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And that I have ended up at like half price book for like five did. bucks. And but honestly, it's it's one like of the <laughs> like <laughs> it, it's it's such a cool because I'm not a packaging guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I throw it away. But I've kept that box for so long because taking that toy out of its packaging is such an experience. Like it's a toy that I keep. I keep it, and when I have someone over for like the first time, mm -hmm. I'm like, open this toy just just because it's such an experience. Because you open it, it's got. A gorgeous outer box. You open that up, and you actually pull out Swamp Thing's head, mm -hmm. and then and it's made of kind of like a um, almost like an egg carton material. Yeah, and that pops open, and then there's the figure, and it's just so much fun. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's fun just to, to open it up. Uh, the figure itself is fantastic as well. But mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Jared? Uh, I really like nineteen um, late mid to late eighties GI Joe art. Yeah, oh, so yeah. I think that's some of the most iconic of all time. Mm -hmm. um, they have these incredible dioramas and, and like weird, you know, all the guys are like firing at something. You yeah. never, you rarely see what they're firing like at. Tank I have them all. Yeah, so like every gun on the toy will be firing on the sides and the top. There's missiles flying off. And then the guys are like hanging off the sides of the vehicles too. And they're, mm -hmm. so there's just so much cool G.I. Joe art. Like every single one got like a hand-drawn art. Um, and of course you could see... It, it, about midway through the 90s or later on they, they sort of got rid of that we were looking at some of these reissue boxes here last week yeah um and it's just it's poor it's poor um so i really like the gi joe art and i just saw yesterday and they were tagging me um these people are smart because they were tagging me by your interest mm -hmm. um but somebody has done a kickstarter called the art of gi joe and they're they're preserving it with like high definition original scans of not of the boxes themselves, but of the actual source artwork. They found the artist and they buy, found this stuff. I would stuff. buy a hardcover of that. Yeah, and so they have volume one through three is already released, and they're they're getting number four started. They're like twenty five dollars a book, yeah, but bad. it's it's completely comprehensive by year. So yeah. it's like volume one's like 
83 to 85 and volume two is like 86 to 87 and um super cool stuff and yeah. i think i think that all the art from the 80s is uh man is some of the best oh yeah definitely, definitely. um well now that we're back on let's get back oh. on track here henry uh, uh, Kokomo's Prime. Got, but... I want to talk about Kokomo's Prime here. Okay. Um, he's got a remote. I didn't feel like bringing it. I didn't feel like bringing it because like the antenna is like this like long, and then it'd be a distraction. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool, man. Sean, what does it do exactly? Uh well, that was just a kind of promotional tie-in, and I told Henry the other day when I was still living at home as a teenager, someone had the life size one of those on eBay. Mm-hmm. And hmm. I think it only went for like eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, a radio station had that. As only two grand <laughs> at the time. I mean, but think how much life -size? Uh, remote con life size remote control one. Oh yeah, I think too. I think because we're today. we're working on getting one, right? Uh, RTD two. Supposedly, I need to contact that guy. So in yeah, and ours is like compared to what that life size one costs. Like <clears> ours <throat> is going to be like double or triple the cost. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's cool. I like it. It's unique. And then I really like shiny robots, and I'm a fan of the. I found out yesterday that I'm a fan of the G2 Blame. colorways as well. Yeah, we were um, looking at those yesterday. Or that dude, uh, like I really, I really like, I really like the, the, the different colors again. on the yeah on the Dinobots. Like that, everyone's a different color. I wish they would transform together so you'd have a multicolor. And they don't robot. really go for too much. You're like no. twenty bucks. Yeah, so if you want to, if you want the the G1 toys, and don't mind the colors, get the G2s. Or get them both. Yeah, so I really <laughs> before and after. I know they made him in masterpiece form. I hope they go for this guy too with that color. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll want to get those for sure. And then so is this like Fast and the Furious or whatever with the bling. This is your roll. <laughs> well, check this out, man. Like you can do a little spider like vehicle. <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider um. So yesterday was the release of Resident Evil Seven. Um. You got in Krauser from Resident Evil Four. One of the more better villains of the series. And I can't wait to play the game. It looks cool. Yeah. Like, I'm not much of a Resident Evil guy, but I was watching some gameplay of it, and I was like, this looks really, really creepy. And that first game on PS1 or whatever, PS2 or PS1 or whatever. PlayStation 1. Mm -hmm. Man, when the dog jumps at you? Do that game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're, that. you're walking through the hallways of that mansion there, like in the very beginning of the game, and that's, it was terrifying. My first experience with Resident Evil was actually Resident Evil 2. And it was, I was at my grandparents' house, and my uncle had a PS1. And I still had, I was still a Genesis kid. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, wow, a PS1. So I just turned it on. Or, well, back then it was, oh, wow, PlayStation, you know. So I just turned it on, and that was the game that was in there. So I started playing it. Had no idea what I was doing, and I just kept, like, I couldn't figure out that you had to hold down R1 to get the gun up, mm -hmm. you know. So I just so walked around really slow. They were asleep. Like they, well, no, my uncle had it. Oh, so okay. It was like, was, he was older your grandpa. Didn't like, yeah. <laughs> and so I just like, so it's like two in the morning, and your grandparents' house is already kind of creepy at night, you know. And so I'm just like, no physical grandparents. And then like, ah, and then I'm just, and then I was just like, I don't think I like this game. <laughs> see, 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 I played it on Wii, and then I got so far, and then I would always look on YouTube to do the walkthroughs or whatever. Mm -hmm. and then I was like. I think I'm gonna quit playing right now because there's all psychological music and like yeah. jump out oh, and scary is, in the lights. This I'm one's like, like as soon as you start, there's a man with a with a bag over his head with a chainsaw coming after you, mm -hmm. and then eventually you get to this guy where his hand, his entire arm turns into a giant like knife. Yeah, I tried so. playing Resident Evil Four because of all the hype and everything. Oh, it's great, and uh, and yeah, I should say it's still regarded as like one of the best games ever. Mm -hmm. But I just I'm too much of a coward, man. I can't I've, do horror games. I've bought that game on three different <laughs> platforms. Like mm -hmm. each generation, I buy it every time they re-release it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's great. I always go back and play it. So what's that small yeah. figure you got? Yeah, let's finish up with your toys, man. Small. Okay. Uh, well, first we got Spider Hulk, which is uh, what, when was this? Like 2001, 2002? No, no, no. no, no. It, oh, oh, no, there goes. That's the that's there. after Toy Biz because that's a Hasbro toy. No, it ain't. No, it is Toy Biz. But, yeah, well, uh, hang on. There's a date on his foot. 2006. Yeah. So I would still be Toy Biz. Man, I had the Toxin from that line, and I sold it for like 15 bucks. Really? And it's like an $80 figure. Well, we only got 40 on him. That's a yeah. really good deal. Uh, he's pretty cool. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of big dudes. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like the big figures. Uh, so uh, Hulk Spider-Man, that's right up my alley. Um, also, I set up here these uh, McFarlane uh, Matrix action figures. Because I was walking through the store and I was just blown away how cheap we had them. We got them for eight bucks. I can remember being like 15, 16 when these were coming out. 
and going to like spawn.com and just drooling over pictures of them and uh now it's just crazy how cheap they are and everything because i can like you know i grew up in the middle of nowhere in missouri mm -hmm. so there wasn't a toy shop for me to go to uh so it was incredibly hard to get these things, and if I wanted to buy them, I had to buy them on eBay. And I remember, I think I picked up, like, the Neo doing the flip in the mm -hmm. corridor. But I spent, like, 50 bucks on that toy. Uh, I don't know. here, under 8 bucks. I don't know, right? Uh, but, yeah, we've got several of those. we got Morpheus. Uh, we got the Agent Smith from the Fight in the Rain. Uh, and then we've got, uh, I think this, who's this? Oh, we got Trinity from the corridor. She's doing a cool, a sweet flip. Sweet flip. But uh, the last thing here sitting here is... The um, new Freddy Krueger quarter scale. Uh, this is from NECA Toys. This just came out, or is this a back order? Well, we came mm -hmm. in yesterday. Came no, in but yesterday. is it a back order? Like, was it a re-release? I'm not sure. I, don't, first I, don't, time? I feel like I've never seen this before. They just kind of they just kind of throw it out. They're like, hey, this is available, and we're like, it's, okay, uh, we want it. As you can see, oh, that's terrifying. Lots and lots of detail. Comes with this hat and an alternate head, which is really cool. Oh, I gotta see because um, we didn't open it. Yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Hey, give me a peek. <laughs> yeah. show, show and tell. Yeah. <laughs> but he's really cool. I mean, um, hey, <laughs> it's I'm not. I was always. I was more of a Jason Voorhees kid. Mm -hmm. So Freddy never really did. They're all friends. So. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> no, 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 it's Freddy versus wrong. Jason. Not Freddy hangs out with Jason. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool <clears throat> figure. It's a lot of toy for 110 bucks. Uh, you know, it's that's you know if you if you do plastic versus plastic, that's better than hot toys or anything else you can mm -hmm. come across. And it has a hot toys level head sculpt in my opinion. Uh, but I think that's about it. Uh, uh, Jared, do we have any questions or anything? Or um, yeah, I don't know. We, we have quick. we have a good amount of viewers. Uh, more than thirty people watching right now. Um, good morning, everyone. We've had some kind of color commentary as we go, but not really much questions. Uh, somebody earlier this uh, sticks out as someone said, "What's your favorite toy from the vintage Star Wars line?" From, like, actual vintage or from the vintage collection? You know, they weren't specific. <laughs> um, I'm going to go Boba Fett. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, that's her thing. cool one. Sean, Sean's favorite is Jedi Luke Knight with the blue saber. No, no, I think I just like them all. I just love that <laughs> toy line in general. Sean's like, the things they've done for me, I, I like them all. I all. like buying yours even better. Yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted to Look talk about some of the... Some of the hot toys. Um, we got in the Death Trooper Specialist. I think we have two left. Yeah, those have been selling pretty quick. I actually found a Boba Fett hot toy in the warehouse. Um, so we have one of him, I think. What is this, like the Indiana Jones movie? Or <laughs> we have top you, men working on it. I just try. I just try to find everything and keep everything organized. Occasionally one gets lost in the shuffle. Well, there you go. We got more hot toys. Somebody asks, uh, will all the items that are on the table be uploaded to the website for purchase? Um, uh, just the vintage Star Wars. The vintage Star Wars. Star Wars, Wars yes. are... These kind of... Purchase something, you can always message us yeah. through Facebook, probably. These kind of things we kind of just like to let the locals get. Um, we're kind of modern for the website, and then something like this, it's not very cost efficient to ship out for free. Exactly. So, yeah. well, if you want to, we can charge for shipping, but uh, yeah. usually we don't put quarter scale figures on the website. But yeah, let us know what it is you're interested in, and uh, you know, we'll do everything in our power to help you out. Mm -hmm. To help you get them, get them toys, man. So, yeah, I think that's by the power of this haircut. I think that's all <laughs> I wanted to say. All the toys I wanted to talk about sold. Yeah, I think we're good. I think it's just about time for us to start doing some business. So yeah, it is ten o'clock. Well, Sean, will you uh, will you tell everybody about where they can find us online or in person? Yes, come check out our website, DallasFinishedToys.com. <clears throat> I think we're back up over seventy one hundred items on the website, so uh, definitely check that out. We're adding stuff. Pretty much every day, uh, Tuesday through Friday. We're open uh, Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Our address is 120524 Skate Drive, Dallas, Texas, 75243. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we buy, sell, and trade toys. If you have any first shots, let me know.